Hi, welcome. This is uh, Larry London again, me and my jacket. And we are here to talk to you about the five different things in drumming. One of the biggest things that helped me is to be an expert at what I'm not. And in order to do that, I had to learn to say no to a lot of things. And once I started saying no to things, I just opened up all sorts of time. I said no to baseball and gaming and ATVs and it just goes on and on. And every one of those steps, like when I got rid of TV in 1992, they, it bought me so much time, extra time to be able to put into my things. So my drumming is so important to me as a priority that I got rid of those other things that were less important. These five things are how I understand the things that I am not good at. Okay, these are the things I'm not. In order to be great at something, you have to actually say, I am not going to go down these other paths. Those other paths that I mentioned that I said no to were easy to say no to by comparison to drumming because they didn't have anything to do with drumming and drumming is very high on my priority list. But these other things are part of drumming and for me to say no to that actually took some discipline. It took some discipline to realize what parts of drumming are the most important on my priority list. So let me just run them down. There are five different things in drumming all going on at the same time. If you are on the outside, a civilian, a non-drummer, and you look at drumming, you probably think of all five of these things as the same thing. But as drummers, we know that they are completely different things. All five of these. You could spend your whole life on any one of these five and still not know hardly anything about the other four. So let me run this down this way. The first one is world beat percussion. Now world beat percussion used to be called Latin percussion. There's a company called Latin percussion now. It's called world beat percussion and there are hundreds and hundreds of gadgets. Every kind of box, every kind of cajon, every kind of hand drum. You play them with sticks, you play congas, you play bongos, you play timbales. It's gotten really complicated. They stand, but they have foot pedals now. It is, it's so complicated, I don't know anything about it. I know nothing about it. I don't want to know anything about it. I've never been drawn to hit drums with my hands. Drumsticks, okay. Hands, that's somebody else's life to figure that out. If you ever watch a video with Alex Acuna, those guys know everything about it. They know every creek and tribe and whether it's for a winter dance or a summer dance, I know nothing about that stuff. So if you're interested in percussion, world beat percussion, you're going to need to find an instructor for that. I know that's not me. It's number one. Number two, symphonic drumming. Now symphonic drumming is what you do in a symphony. In a symphony, there might be three or five guys back there in the percussion section when playing snare drum, playing suspended cymbal, playing bass drum. Uh, I studied piano so I could read piano music so they had me playing vibes, marimbas, timpanis are tunable, doom, 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 and glockenspiel. But really, it's, it's an accumulation of people who are playing this stuff. Uh, I saw the Oregon Symphony play and a guy came out front and he was, he was with a triangle, just a triangle. And I was like, this can't be, you can't have a solo piece around a triangle. Sure enough, they wrote this whole piece to showcase this guy with a triangle. He came up, he had a couple different times and it was hanging and it was uh, had a microphone and he must have got eight or ten sounds out of this, uh, unbelievable, out of this triangle. And I just went, dude, good for you, man. Good for you. And it's your life to figure out how to get ten sounds out of a triangle. It's not my life. I've never wanted to do that. And so I did it through school because I'd rather be around music than not. But really, symphonic drumming is a whole nother life. There was an um, older gentleman, Bob, who was part of the swing era that would come into the store where I was teaching. And he would always ask me, he would say, Larry, he was retired. He said, Larry, are you, have you been working on your buzz roll? Have you been working on your, your press roll? And I'd get the guys around and, and uh, we'd say, hey, Bob's here. We'd talk to him and he would t do the press room. We would talk, get the perf. He goes, you got to be just like you're tearing a piece of paper. It's like you're tearing a piece of paper. Every time, it's like 20 times he would come in and he did the same thing. And I go, Bob, that's really great, but I could go my whole life and never play a buzz roll because my hands are on separate surfaces. I don't think he really understood that. But it's okay 
because I wanted him to feel valued. And I would say, yeah, let's work on that together. But in my real life, that's not something that I've ever wanted to work on. There are people who work on that stuff. And that brings me to number three. So we have world beat percussion, symphonic percussion, and then we have chord drumming. Chord drumming, marching drumming. Um, uh, I grew up, there was a parade in town, and I would have to carry a drum and play, and we did that through school. And uh, it was a lot of work. But you start realizing right away that when you are in a drum line, you are not playing. You are playing with 20 other guys down a thing. You might have to time something with somebody who's 30 yards away by the sound of it. It is an enormous task. It is those guys study two hands on one surface their whole life. I couldn't touch it. I, I don't want to touch it. It's their life. I've never been drawn to it. So right there are three things right there. Uh, world beat percussion, symphonic drumming, and uh, core drumming, marching. All three of those things are right off the table for me. Uh, they're just not my life. I've known that right from the beginning. Fourth thing, electronic drumming. Now, I grew up where the machines came in. I love the machines. I love pop music. I love programming. Uh, when the drum machines came in, I bought one right away. When uh, electronic drums, there was a thing called a syndrome, and all it would just do is go pew, 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 pew. And I got that thing hooked up. And then uh, later, when I had my uh, white uh, Grand Star Tama kit with the rack, I had another rack that went around, and I bought a whole uh, rolling kit that went around, and, and uh, kind of like Neil from Rush, Neil Peart. So I basically um, really love that kind of thing, except that every time I tried to make electronic drums sound like drums, it was very frustrating. I spent a lot of money on samplers and to get sounds and... And let me tell you, they make them better than ever. They make them better than ever. There's a couple guys running around from the companies, and they, they're inside every truncation and bit rates. They, they, they are inside of that kind of world. I am not that interested in it to be that inside of it. I, um, they should call them keyboards hit with a stick because they're not really electronic drums. The best thing they do is not sound like a drum set. They should be called keyboard shape with a stick. So to me, it is a very, very different instrument. It looks kind of like drumming, and they say it's electronic drums, but when it really comes down to it, it is a different animal altogether. It feels different. It sounds different. You, uh, the sound does not come out of the surface that you hit, like in, in drums. If I see a tom, and I, you know, I go, I want a tom sound, I look at it, and I make a tom sound. That could be a tom. It could be a conga. It could be a cowbell. It could be a synthesizer. It could be all sorts of things. That is four. So run them down that is world beat percussion symphonic drumming core drumming and electronic drumming that for me right on the face of it is right off i just push it right off those are not at the center of what i'm trying to do what's at the center of what i'm trying to do is drum set drum set acoustic drum set is the thing that i was totally drawn to right from the beginning and the reason is because i grew up with this martial arts fascination um, I always said I was I was adopted, so I always said I was Bruce Lee's illegitimate son and a big Jackie Chan, Jet Li fan. And when they have a movie where one guy comes in and he takes out the whole room of adversaries with nothing but his hands and his feet, there is something so magical about that that one guy, all he has to do is control everything in his space. He doesn't have to worry about anything outside of his space. Anything that comes into his space, he manages, and the drums do that for me. They, they, they process all of the things that I need to do that it is just one person making all the sounds. So for drum set, the thing I love about the drum set is that there's only one person making all the sounds, there's no chords attached, so that nobody can go, well, I'm not sure if he's making that sound or if it's a sequence or if it's a, a delay. There, there's no loops. It's just you. So every sound out of the drum set is you. That's what makes it so pure. It's like violin. I played a, um, a musical where I, the barrier, the clear barrier, was right next to the row of violins. And the, this one piece would start with one violin and then it went to two violins. And it was so beautiful the way that they had the, every sound that comes out of a violin is them. If it is bad, it is them. And if it's beautiful, they have earned it, they've done it. So this is where, as an artist, 
I am so totally drawn. I'm drawn in by the drum set because it is all me. If I blow it, it's all me. If it's beautiful, it's all me. As an artist, it's so clear. It's not a drum line where you organize the 20 or 40 different guys over here and over here and over there and around. And it, it has nothing to do with that. It is just as pure as it can be. That's why drum set of those five really speaks to me. It's very hard to say no to all these other things when everybody has this idea that it's all the same thing and you have to know all that. I, you don't. You don't. You can make your choices and really specialize. I'm a drum set specialist. So the effort of this video is to help you to learn to say no. Now, back when Latin was the language that everyone had to speak to be any kind of a professional, studied, scientific person, every doctor, everybody, uh, somebody said, learn to say no. It'll be more used to you than if you learn the entire Latin language. And so I learned to say no early on to a lot of different things that bought me more time in my time wedge to devote to what I really want to do, which is drumming. And then within that wedge of drumming, I went, whoa, there's five things. And I started pairing them out until I was down to just drum set. You could spend your whole life on just fractions of the drum set and still not touch other things in the drum set. You could be a Latin master and not know anything about metal. And me those metal guys are unbelievable and they still not know anything about, you know, jazz. <laughs> so it is a huge piece of the pie anyway. Just drum set. So if there's anything I can encourage you with today, it's just to start saying no to things in the outside circle of your life. And then in the inside circle of your life where drumming is, learn to say no to things that are not speaking to you as an artist. And then pour yourself into that 100%. So there's five different things going on in drumming. You can spend your whole life in any one of those things and not know anything about the others. So I'm a drum set specialist. Once I figured that out, now I'm trying to figure out what part of the drum set that I'm really really trying to make a, a, a difference in my life so that I can speak those those mechanics out. And that has to do with my Master L and Linear Squared idea with my mirrored set. You're going to want to check those videos out. I'll have videos about Master L and the whole Linear Squared. And if you're interested in that, I'll be breaking down the mechanics of that. I, I just want to thank you guys for joining me as I share some of these learning philosophies that really helped me corral down my time and my energy so that I can be really productive as an artist. Hey, thank you guys for uh, joining me as I walk through these philosophies of learning. Try to watch as many of these as you can and keep corralling down the priorities of your life so that you can be very, very efficient learners so that you can be really satisfied artists on the drum set. This is the series I wrote, London's Great Start series, happens to be book three. There's ten in the series. I would advise you to pick it up and to implement it into your life in action so that you can really solve all of this noise that's going on in drumming and draw a straight line. It's like a free way of learning. It'll take you right down the subdivisions that make all music work. I just want to encourage you that you can do this and uh, you're not too old to do it. Old dogs can learn new tricks and you're smarter than you've ever been. You're, uh, you're more aware of your body than you've ever been. You have more discipline than you've ever had. You have more financial means than you've ever had. You can make this happen at any age and so please pick up the series and make it a part of your life. Uh, check those out at my YouTube uh, channel which is Larry London Drummer and uh, I have a Facebook called Larry London Drummer as well. Uh, and remember my favorite quote, discipline is remembering what you want.